All right, Cincinnati, it is time for this town to get down. WKRP in Cincinnati. A subtle masterpiece with eight well-balanced characters that enjoyed four stellar seasons. You see, this show was extremely authentic. Most of that goes to creator Hugh Wilson, who based the show upon his experiences working in ad sales at a radio station in Atlanta. WKRP didn't pull great ratings, but did earn 10 Emmy nominations and was heralded by disc jockeys for its accuracy. This show had a cult following and enjoyed huge success in syndication, eventually warranting the spin-off the new WKRP in Cincinnati. But the cast of WKRP made this one of the most compelling sitcoms of the 70s and 80s, and with standout episodes like Turkeys Away, which incredibly was not entirely made up. I really don't know how to describe it. It was like the turkeys mounted a counterattack. We'll get to that later. This show remains a classic. I'm your DJ, Nostalgic Nick, and today we're heading back to the station to see what the staff got into after the videotape filled up. That's right, this show was actually videotaped instead of filmed, because rights to rock songs were cheaper for a taped show than for a filmed one. I mean, that's genius. Hey, if you enjoy this video, give it a big thumbs up for us, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of our premieres. Gary Sandy Andy Travis is the new program director and turns the station from elevator music to rock. With his feathered hair, Andy was handsome and wholesome, a sharpshooter who forms quite the bond with his staff. Gotcha! His satin WKRP staff jacket was actually a modified Cincinnati Reds warm-up jacket, one of the many nods to the hometown team. And Gary Sandy was the perfect everyman for this sitcom. He was even born in Dayton, Ohio, and lived in the state till after college. His acting career began in 1970, with guest roles on some great shows like an episode each of Medical Center and Barnaby Jones. But nothing came close to his Andy Travis. In 1986, he starred alongside the never-ending stories Noah Hathaway in the film Troll. It's a pretty bad but fun ghoulies or gremlins attempt if you haven't seen it. We last saw Sandy in the 2004 made-for-TV movie, A Place Called Home, that featured Bye Bye Birdie star and former Elvis lover, the beautiful Anne Margaret. And for the complete and unbelievable list of Elvis lovers, we have a fun video for you to watch next. Today, Gary's 75, still acting but mainly stage work, and coincidentally, he's also doing some radio dramas. Gordon Jump Arthur Carlson, aka the big guy, is the stammering, awkward general manager whose main qualification is that his overbearing mother is WKRP's owner. Thankfully, Gordon was very qualified for his job. Interestingly enough, Gordon was also born in Dayton, Ohio, and his first job was actually in a radio station. He began acting in 1965 with an episode of Daniel Boone. Then he started working constantly, including seven episodes of The Partridge Family in the early 70s. And if you haven't seen our Then and Now episode about the Partridge cast, go see what Susan Day and company are up to. The year before becoming Carlson, he played Chief of Police Tinkler in the popular show Soap. Along with reprising his Carlson in the new WKRP, he also portrayed Ed Malone in the wildly popular Growing Pains. One of Gordon's final gigs was in the ninth and final season of Seinfeld, as George Costanza's boss at a playground equipment company over two episodes. Gordon Jump sadly died in 2003 at the age of 71 from pulmonary fibrosis, but his footprints on television history is quite significant. Jan Smithers. Bailey Quarters is originally in charge of billing and station traffic, the young ingenue of the station, if you will. However, she's savvy, and later on we see how much more competent she is than Nesman. Meanwhile, in Washington, a highly placed presidential advisor denied that he once shot heroin with a group of Hell's Angels. <laughs> the character of Bailey Quarters was based on creator Hugh Wilson's wife. Jan Smithers started her career as a model. Featured on the cover of Newsweek magazine in 1966, her acting career bloomed in the 1974 film Where the Lilies Bloom. But besides four episodes of The Love Boat, she really didn't do much after her Bailey quarters. We last saw her act in 1987's comedy Mr. Nice Guy, as after which she retired from acting. From 1986 to 1995, Jan was married to actor James Brolin, and the two have one daughter together named Molly Elizabeth. 
Today, Jan is in her early 70s, and she enjoys traveling the world, specifically to India. In a recent interview, she states, quote, I learned to meditate there, and I changed a great deal. Jan has traveled there for 16 consecutive years, becoming an advocate for wellness and spirituality. Frank Bonner Herb Tarlek was the vain sales manager with the tackiest suits in Cincinnati, often referred to as the little guy to Arthur Carlson's big guy. Frank Bonner got his start in the 1970 cult classic Equinox, which has some great stop animation monsters if you've never seen it. In 1978, Bonner was injured in a parachute accident when a freak wind led him to falling 20 feet to the ground. This is why you may remember his Herb on crutches for some of season two. Oh, hey, listen, guys, I got somebody I want you to meet. Uh, this is Anderson. <laughs> From 1988 to 1990, Bonner played the headmaster of the fictional St. Augustine's Academy on the TV show Just the Ten of Us, a spinoff of Growing Pains. Frank didn't just act on WKRP, he also directed for the first time and did six episodes in total. He's gone on to direct more than act. From 11 episodes of Harry and the Hendersons to all 105 episodes of the late 90s show City Guys. Today, Bonner is 79 years old and hopefully enjoying life away from parachutes. Tim Reed Venus Flytrap, whose real name was Gordon Sims back when he was a teacher, instead of the funky evening DJ. Venus was smooth talking and soulful. So iconic, his character inspired Tim Meadows to create Leon Phelps for the great SNL sketch, The Ladies Man. Hello, ladies man. Oh, it's a lady. <laughs> Tim Reed began acting in 1974, but WKRP was definitely his big break, after which he joined the hit CBS detective series Simon & Simon for nearly 80 episodes. His next television mainstay was in the 90s show Sister Sister, starring as Tia and Tamara Maori's on-screen father. Reed has never slowed down. We recently saw him in the 2020 Lifetime movie A Welcome Home Christmas. Today he is 76 years old and also founded the Legacy Media Institute, a non-profit organization which seeks to attract young people to film. Howard Hessman Dr. Johnny Fever is a heavily caffeinated anti-disco DJ, who we all wanted to be. He came to WKRP after being fired from his last gig for saying booger. Needless to say, he adjusted to the rock style swimmingly. Well, it's goodbye to the elevator music. <laughs> Hessman was originally asked to audition for the part of Herb, but he felt he was only right for Johnny Fever and refused. That's Dr. Johnny Fever for you. And Hessman would be nominated for two Emmys for his work. Howard began acting in 1968 with two episodes on The Andy Griffith Show, but his first recurring gig was that of 13 episodes on Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. After WKRP, he had another starring TV gig as Charlie Moore on the ABC series Head of the Class from 86 to 1990. Hessman was ever everywhere in the 70s and 80s, even appearing on SNL three times. Today, he is 81 years old, and we last saw him in 2017 in two episodes of season three of Fresh Off the Boat. Richard Sanders Les Nessman is a very serious reporter, but is fairly incompetent. It's kind of endearing, actually. Chichi Rodriguez. Mr. Rodriguez will play up to I mean, he had a running gag of find the band-aid. Supposedly, his character had a bad big dog at home. So Les always sported some injury wear. This spawned from the pilot taping, in which Sanders wore a band-aid from an injury. Richard was hysterical as Nesman, highlighted in Turkeys Away, as he broadcast live from the Pinedale Mall, as Carlson dropped Turkeys out of the sky, and Nesman utters, The turkeys are hitting the ground like sacks of wet cement! What a line. Did I mention that this wasn't entirely fiction? Hugh Wilson said he based the plot on a similar promotion spearheaded by a station in Dallas, where they threw turkeys out of the back of a truck that shockingly went awry. As God is my witness, I thought turkeys could fly. <laughs> And Sanders brilliantly narrates the entire thing before lending his voice to the cartoon in Humanoids. But he would once again shine in the WKRP revival. We last saw Sanders in 2006 in the comedy Expiration Date. Today he is 80 years old and hopefully avoiding all things turkeys. 
Lonnie Anderson. Jennifer Marlowe is the station's receptionist, and also its highest paid employee, which is a great running gag, and probably the biggest reason why most people, men in particular, would tune in. But Happy birthday <laughs> to you. But she wasn't just beautiful. Marlowe was incredibly friendly and good-hearted to her co-workers. And that's because Lonnie refused to be the dumb blonde type. Her Jennifer was not only smart, but was also a journalism major. And Lonnie was quite brilliant in the role, constantly deflecting calls for Carlson. Lonnie Anderson began acting in 1966, but didn't really hit her stride until the late 70s, which included five episodes of The Love Boat. I was surprised that her next TV show attempt, 1980 Four's Partners in Crime, alongside Wonder Woman herself, didn't last past one season. For more on Lovely Linda, cue up that Wonder Woman deep dive episode too. In 1993, Lonnie was added to the third season of the popular sitcom Nurses, playing the hospital administrator. Aside from her acting career, Anderson became known for her colorful personal life, particularly her marriage to actor Burt Reynolds. The two starred in the 1983 comedy Stroker Ace, which was a critical and box office flop. They adopted a son together named Quentin, but divorced in 1994 after six years of marriage. Today, Lonnie is 75 years old, and Lonnie will forever be remembered as one of the biggest sex symbols of the 1970s. What a great show. Is there a specific episode that you remember fondly? Maybe one besides Turkey's Away. Did you have a favorite character from WKRP? Can any actual radio station employees speak to the authenticity of this show? Please tell us in the comments below. We want to hear from you. And if you enjoyed this cast rewind, give it a big thumbs up for us. And subscribe to the channel so you never miss a memory. From all of us here at Do You Remember, signing off for now. I'm at WKRP in Cincinnati.